Welcome to this week's show, The Crazy Gentleman Podcast. I'm your host, The Crazy Gentleman, and this week's show is brought to you by Lexan-Moto.com for all of the most badass audio devices inside your helmet while you're riding. Listen to this podcast. Listen to a fucking concert. Listen to whatever you want. Crank it up. Uh, Punch in the code word crazy for 15% off at checkout. Also brought to you by Simbita underscore custom underscore knives on Instagram or SimbitaCustomKnives.com. Uh, hit up Evan for the world's finest hunting, outdoor, and cutlery knives. Uh, even you guys that don't hunt or fuck around in the woods, get an awesome kitchen knife. Uh, and tell them I sent you. And also hit up the bumpshopbackroom.com uh, or the Bump Shop Diaries on Instagram. It is the only place that you could get Crazy Gentleman merchandise right now. Uh, also support Rodney's new coffee company and all of his awesome vintage finds. And last but not least, you know this guy, Bare Knuckle oh, no. Performance. Uh, BareNucklePerformance.com for all of the highest quality American made parts for your Harley Davidson and Indian Sportsters, FXRs, Dinas, and Choppers. And that's it. Uh, speaking of FXRs, we're here at FXR Division with Porsche and snowmobile enthusiast <laughs> Brian. But I heard he built his first motorcycle, so I figured I'd talk to him. Yeah, once or, <laughs> almost done. Yeah, almost, it's almost done. It's almost done. <laughs> I heard I heard there was a bunch of cool things about these motorcycles. So yeah, I figured I'd yeah. try it out. Yeah, I heard they get you chicks. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know what? They don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> or at least the people that I hang out with. No. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't, man. I wish they got you more than people think. <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah, dude. So what's up, Brian? You're here from uh, Reno, out of town. Yep. Just um, visiting these fuckers for a couple days. Yep. Uh, drop off some parts. Kind of go over some stuff that we've been working on together. Um, I don't know. Just motorcycles. That's usually what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't want to underplay it or anything, but uh, this guy in the background here <laughs> it's a pretty sweet bike pan dude. america yes sir um which one is this one for the fxr tour or so the, no this is the 120th anniversary oh the 120th so it'll okay. be at born free la okay. and then displayed in milwaukee for the week cool. of the 120th anniversary very cool and then it will gonna... be going on the fxr tour also too oh cool yeah, are yeah, you yeah. going to ride it on the fxr tour with these guys i have my own bike for the fxr tour oh that's yeah, right yeah, you're yeah, doing yeah. your own build yep and Chris basically told that? me we could switch all three bikes, but then he remembered I was building a shovel head and he said, fuck that. You're building a shovel head <laughs> FXR? Yes, sir. Oh, I hate you, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. That was basically the reason that I'm doing it. Dude. Because, <laughs> because everyone's going the other way. You know, yep. everyone's trying to put everything they can into it. And I said, you know what? I, I want to go the other way. So yeah. I found oh an, 82, God, uh, a, an 82 original. Okay. They came all together, matching numbers. Okay. Not that that matters much, but I felt like keeping keeping them together. Okay. You know? Cool, man. Yeah. So Chris um, basically told me to fuck off. He, yeah. He don't. He don't want to ride that. So. I I knew I liked Chris. For a <laughs> oh my god, dude! People are gonna be laughing their fucking asses off at this. Yes. Um, I love it. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a very outspoken. I, I'm just not a fan of shovel heads and FXRs. Yeah. Oh, no. Trust I'm like, me. it's just not a performance platform. Definitely. You know? 100%. But, yeah. I mean, that's why. They look cool as shit, but, like, for me, they're choppers. Like, One, well, shovel heads are for choppers. So, you know? my, I fucked my head up a while back when I bought that KTM adventure bike. Uh huh. So, I'm not trying to put the perform. I used, that's all I did before okay. is I need performance and chopper, you know, in, in any kind of Harley. It needed to fucking handle, it needed to corner it needed to go fast right which they still need to but on that same note i can do that on the ktm you yeah. know what i mean and it does it 10 times better than any harley i've ever ridden and so and that's a shitty thing to say but you know I, dude it is what it is I mean. so this this fxr is going to be more my you know it's going to be something i can get out and enjoy i'm mm-hmm. not doing 120 everywhere i'm not you know everybody's already said we're leaving you in the dust on the fxr tour that's fine i'll catch yeah. up you know I've, we've <laughs> This isn't my first rodeo, so yeah. like. Well, you know Nick at FXR Bazaar, you guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's doing a shovel head also. Yep, yep. Um, so I did. Um, well, 
Justin actually has the t- his tank right now. Mm-hmm. I took it on as I was going to do it, chop the tank and narrow it up like I did mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we got two into this thing, and so the guys over here are going to cut it in half for him okay. and do everything. But I've done a bunch. Of, I did the struts for Nick a couple of years ago. He made some cool struts. Mm-hmm. He's a good dude. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was like a limited run. I remember that. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah, two, three, four years ago. Maybe. Yeah, it was supposed to. Be, I don't know. Not as smart as everybody else is on the FXRs, but it had options to do shocks in a couple spots and then bag mounts in a couple spots. Right, that that's what it was. Yep. It it let you run those struts, I think on uh, on a standard model and an RP. Exactly. I think that was the trick the with those. Sounds, yep, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are pretty cool. I remember just being too broke at the time to afford those. Yeah, well, and it <laughs> they was, were cool. They were like, those were all handmade too, uh, or they were all done on the mill, you know, by hand versus okay. in CNC and stuff. And okay. so since then, We've talked, and he wants to do another, like a, a small run of them on the CNC. So cool, yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah, I love that. I love a lot of the limited run stuff that he does. Like uh, he does those special windshields. Yeah. Um, even like his, I love his shirts, like all the designs and stuff. And uh, yeah, the book is unreal like the too. Sunglasses. The yeah. book is so cool. Yeah, the book is. Yeah, I, I'm always cool. going back to that. Like. Not that I keep it with my service manuals, but I love yeah. that book. No, I, I don't like to I don't tell him I leave it. it up yeah, anything. I told him that too. I was like, yeah. it, it's it's very accessible, but it's not with all the dirty shit. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love it, man. Well, I like how he dug in. Dug. I liked how he digged in with the people that created the FXR. Yeah. You know, and asked their, what was going on at the time? What was going Because, yeah. I mean, that's, I love motorcycles and I love the life, whatever, you know, but building, mo- that's, that's what I enjoy. Yeah. You know, the... The process of creating it so to hear how they did that and then mm-hmm. that's the, the coolest you know harley they've ever built type yeah, thing like, yeah well until this thing so yeah <laughs> <laughs> no performance wise you own a pan america also no, no okay so going from the ktm yeah i was totally against it because i don't think the pan america is a this is again my opinion yeah i'm not associated i'm sure with harley. there's a lot of dudes out yeah. there they're gonna be like you fucking idiot it's not that way but yeah it's more of a street bike yeah. that can perform in the dirt versus where the KTM is a f- dirt, a bike dirt bike that fucking handles a street like what model crazy. KTM do you have? Uh, the 990 Adventure. Okay. So it's like the, the they did it from 07 to 13 and then stopped doing it and okay. they still are, haven't matched that bike yet. You know, it's a it can. Do you think it outperforms a BMW off road? Because I what think I it. I think it out. So I think it outperforms the BMW off road and on road. Oh, really? But Paul will argue with me fucking constantly <laughs> because I think his works for him better because he is a bigger dude. And yeah. so the BMW is a way bigger bike. Okay. It's way heavier. It's a lot more top heavy. The KTM runs their uh, gas uh, way underneath. So like it's on the side panels. So what is the tank? Just an air box? So the tank is, there's basically nothing there. Yeah, okay. it's just like a little glove compartment that sits over the air filters and stuff. Okay. And so you're just running, everything's a lot lower, center of gravity. You know, the bike only weighs 440 wow. versus, you know. BMW is like 600 pounds, Exactly, right? exactly. So oh, wow. it's like a dirt bike that is made for the street, you know, that's just a lot heavier and stuff. Like I take it on single track, I take it, but then you can take it on the curves and and scrape pegs on both sides. So okay. it's, fuck, it, it's hard to beat, you know. Cool. I don't know. I, I fucked over a couple of my buddies with it because they've ridden it and then they went and bought their own. Mm. So, and then their Harley sit more and right, more. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find yourself, uh, like a, a lot of builders are like this. I don't know. I don't know. Some of them don't want to talk about it. Some of them are pretty open about it. Um, do you find yourself as like more of a builder or do you get out there and also ride a lot? So, or, or do you just would rather, would you rather just be in a garage building? No, dude, I'm like, I, when I started building motorcycles, I rode dirt bikes uh-huh. and I was every weekend we were at the track or wherever. Yeah. So riding was a huge part of it, but making a bike that could ride, you know, like I said, performance oriented was a huge part of it. So once I would build the bike, I ride the shit out, you know, I'm and I'm, Besides this, like, last six months, we've been pretty slammed trying to get everything done right. by a certain day. So, yeah, the days are limited. But when this is over, there'll be days where I'm on the KTM every every day for a couple hours or something like that. So, okay. no, I, I, there's a lot of dudes that I have been with in the industry that have 
are great builders and then you go out and ride with them and you're like, whoa, have you ever ridden a motorcycle? Like, yeah. No. And so, but that's fair to them. I don't give a shit. You know, whatever floats their boat is cool. Right. But I'm, just, only, I'm a little half, I'm, I'm half and half. For in, sure. in all fairness, I've only had one person really admit like, I'd rather just build motorcycles and he's an insane builder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's And he's just yeah. like, yeah, I mean, he rides them like by default, but yeah, yeah. he's not like a big rider. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, there's Whereas a lot other of those, guys, uh, there's a lot of guys lying about it though. Oh, they're, they're, exactly. they're just like, oh yeah, I'm a big rider. And it's yeah. like, they're not throwing a leg over shit. Well, and that's, you know? and when you get out and ride with those guys is when you know, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? We've been on, Justin and I have been on a couple of bike, hot bike tours together. And mm-hmm. you know, when you get a mix of, 10 builders on one side and 10 on the other, the bagger and the, the customs. And now you got 20 dudes out there that are riding that you don't usually ride with. And yeah. then you got a guy that fucking comes flying past everybody and then slams on his brakes. And then, you know, it's just weaving in and out of people. You're like, yeah, yeah you don't ride. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and then there's dudes like Bobby who fucking love riding. You know, he just yeah. loves being on motorcycles yeah, too. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, that, I'm a little half and half, you know, but I, I don't, I don't give a shit what anybody does because if building bikes is your jam, like <laughs> yeah, the engineering and the building of it to me is the biggest thing. So, um, dude, speaking of riding, like uh, we didn't even, I purposely kind of skated away from the story because I kind of wanted you to tell it again. <laughs> uh, dude, tell that story about how the like a bunch of deer ran between you guys riding one time. Oh yeah, we were talking about the it's deer so night. Yeah. yeah, that's why I kind of like skated away. I'm like, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Later. So uh, me and this dude I used used to ride with a while back. Uh, we're cruising from San Francisco to Santa Cruz. We stopped, you know, look out over the ocean for a couple of seconds, take a break, and it was just getting dark. And you know, he looked over. He's like, ah, you know, this is when the deer come out. I'm like, yeah, I know. Well, pay attention and shit. But neither of us, you know, we fucking start hammering down about 95 <laughs> up Highway One, and uh, we came to a section where, you know, there's hills everywhere, and you know where they dig the fucking road straight through the hills. So the hill kind of comes up, drops down, and the road's right there. And you know, yeah. you're going straight through. What kind, oh, what kind of bikes were you guys on too? Uh, he was on a custom Dyna that he had done, and I was on a blue, my Blue Rigid that I that I mashed. So okay. Um, I was in front. He was probably about six, eight, ten feet behind me, you know, just off to the side a little bit. We're doing like 90 through the fucking hills. And I spot the deer. There's three of them chilling up on the top of the hill. And it's like, fuck, don't move, don't move. And all of a sudden, they just went into full sprint. And so the way it went, I fucking pinned it, made a little, you know, got a little left into the other lane. I don't know what he did because I didn't look back you know until until it was over but the what he said is he slammed the brakes dipped to the right one of the deer went between us one of the deer went behind him and then the third one just kind of followed out kind of gave a look back you know one of these and fucking hammer down fucking so fucking crazy because you know as well as i do you slow down there you're gonna be fucking nervous the rest of the time yeah so you just just hammer down and get back at it yeah Yeah. the chances of that happening again were probably slim but it was one of those things that when we got back to the house you know we got to the place we're going that night then it was like what the fuck just happened you know so yeah but that, you know, that shit happens where you're at too, so. Yeah, I had always wondered that, like when I'm riding with people, if deer will ever run between me, but you're only the second person I've ever heard that happening to. Yeah, and like I said, we were um, eight to 10 feet minimum. You know what I mean? So like, because like, he was a dude I rode with all the time. So yeah. it was no, we always just kind of knew where everybody was, you know? Yeah. And fucking right. Have you seen the video that the deer that jumped over the guy in Sturgis though? Nah. So there's a, you know, Sturgis, there's fucking lines and lines of bikes. And out of the blue, fucking deer comes over and he launches from the, right about the yellow line, you know, on this side of the yellow line, straight over the bike, dude. And the guy fucking kind of ducks like this and someone happened to be gopro in it, you know, at the same Damn. time. So fucking, yeah, they're out, dude. You never know, man. Yeah, they're no joke. Yeah, the, the only other time I heard of that was, um, uh, and it's not even like it was a personal story, was uh, in Billy Lane's book. Okay. He said that happened with him and Indian Larry in, in Sturgis. That's pretty cool. The deer <laughs> fucking went right between the two yeah, of them. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's fucking crazy, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, the best part is like the front guy. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, know? no, that's what I said. I was just, I'm like, dude, I just got to get out of this fucker because he's coming at me. Yeah. Like, you know, the way he was coming, he was coming at me. And the way it just worked out, he just went right ah oh, it's fucked up yeah. yeah but you know we've 
We could tell stories all day about almost it, dying on motorcycles, I'm sure. It, oh, God, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no joke, man. Um, but you had said you were on your blue bike. How far in, like, how many bikes did you build prior to that blue bike? Because, like, oh. you, you were put on, you got put on my map, like, uh, on my radar, however you want to say it. Um, I think in either, like, 07 or 09. Oh, shit, okay. Um, when you did that bike with the, I think it was a flat black frame and green tins. Oh, yeah. Um, it was in Iron Horse Magazine. Yeah, that was my um, very first, that was our bike that we built in 05. Uh-huh. The very first one I built for the shop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I built that with a buddy. We, Me and my buddy started the shop together, and he lasted that bike. And then he had family things, and his real job, you know, and... Is that where, was he part of like the acronym TPJ? What no. does that stand for? So that's Trailer Park Jumpers. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. So my other buddy, Mark, my best buddy is, uh, that's where that started from. We lived in uh, Lake Tahoe. Okay. And we worked at a rental shop, ski okay. rent, you know, uh, at a ski resort. And it was in the 90s. And so all the dudes would come in with the 70s and 80s gear. You know, like the leather fucking stuff with the little rainbows and, you know. Was, Snow gear was leather back then? Back in like the 70s and 80s, it was really? like le- like a leatherish, you know, because it would keep the water off. But it, it was just horrible, you know, and it looked so trailer park. And right. so <laughs> we started taking these gloves out of the fucking rental, sh- or the, uh, the lost and found. And we happened to live in a fucking trailer at the time. You know, there was a trailer park in the in the city. Right. And uh, it was for the college kids, but we didn't go to college. But we got a great deal on it. And we would hike up and build jumps on our day offs. And so these motherfuckers started calling us the trailer park jumpers. Oh, okay. And we just thought, you know, we laughed about it and never thought anything of it. And we were like, yeah, TPJ, TPJ, whatever. And so when it was time to build the, the shop, yep. I didn't want to, you know... I'm not Indian Larry. I'm not Jesse James. You know, what the fuck does my name mean? So I don't want it to just be my name. And that was the first, you know, first 10 years, no one knew what TPJ was either. Like people would ask and I would just kind of, you know, shy off. My good friends knew what it was, you know. And so, and then once, I don't know if it was Bobby or somebody else, that they were like, what does fucking TPJ stand for? (laughs) And then they started talking about like dude you should have told us this years ago like we'd remember you know that way more than the other so and he was never really even part of the shop but he was always he's dude he's helped me like immensely over the years you know Mm -hmm. he'll come in when i need a uh deadline he'll come in and drive us to sturgis like we did still in the motorcycle industry at all he was never in the motorcycle industry okay yeah so he just basically like he was a built home builder um, he's going to school to be a nurse right now. Like he had nothing to do with motorcycles, but he gave, I almost say every bit of sweat and energy that I did, but fucking, he gave a shit ton. You know, we built, we finished a bike for the Lichter show in 2010 and you know, we needed to be there Thursday at 9 AM and at Tuesday at fucking midnight, we finished it. Damn. And so he basically, he Which, was coming. What was the theme for that year? You know, that was Lichter the, um, theme, that was when there was, um, an older builder and a younger builder. Oh, okay. So it was like... Um, like an apprentice kind of deal? Exactly. So okay. Kirk Taylor was my partner. Really? Yeah, because he... Dude, I'm fucking such a fan of that guy. Oh, yeah. So I've known him since 04. Okay. Um, I ro- Actually, no. Sorry, 05. Yeah, 05. So on that green bike that you were talking about. Yeah. Rolled into the uh, Smoke Out West. Okay. And... Nah, dude, I'm old. I'm sorry. Let me put that... That was after. Uh, two weeks prior to that, we both took uh, the show to an Easy Rider show. Okay. And I came in second, he came in first. Okay. And as I'm walking out, dude, that bike had no chrome on it. You know, it was all blasted in like yeah. flat black. And he's like, anti-chrome. He's like, it's my favorite fucking bike here. Yeah. So we started talking. And then the next two weeks later was the, the uh, Smoke Out West. Okay. So I drove down from Sacramento area, rode down, rode into the fucking thing, dude, all dirty and fucking wet. I'm like, holy shit, I know that guy. So I pull up next to his uh, his booth, fucking hang out with him, you know, the rest of the day. And then from then on, we'd just, we would go to shows together. He's painted 80% of the bikes I've ever built. Holy crap. You know what I mean? He painted the blue bike that I'm talking about. Wow. The green bike is one of the only ones he hasn't painted, you know, because my buddy did it. Right, right. And so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so we've been super good friends for, for that long. That's awesome. Yeah, so long story short, 2005, probably did 15 20 bikes before the blue bike Killer, something man. like full customs that were 
you know, we did a lot of other bullshit along the way because when I first started, you were doing taillights, you were changing oil, right, and right. doing bullshit like that, you know. And I had a lot of uh, guys that were in clubs that I would keep their bikes running and, you know, just dumb shit like that. But then the custom bikes was what I always wanted to do. You right, know? So, right. Um, what do you do now? Do you even touch, like, will you do any service work or like if someone no. with handlebars, you're just a custom fabricator. So like, I'd say when we moved out of the, the city shop out into the country the first time, mm-hmm. I stopped doing anything service work. So okay. like the first six years I was in an industrial area, had a fucking showroom, the fucking, the whole like motorcycle shop thing right and uh but i didn't enjoy any of it i didn't i'm not a great businessman like i just right. enjoy building things you yeah know? And most, so most motorcycle guys are not we have no interest like, in putting i, I tell people number. that's why i'm your mechanic not your attorney yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know? like, exactly i just want to have fun man yep you know? no and that's i don't have any interest <laughs> in the other stuff you know yeah. and that's and that's been my downfall for a lot of years you yeah. know but I'm, now that I'm older, I'm smarter. At least get get people to do certain things for me, you right, know. Right. So, uh, so no, no service work. Like as soon as we moved out of there, it was just basically all uh, hand fabrication stuff. Um, I did a lot of like machine work for people. Uh, made a lot of parts for other builders, you mm-hmm. know, over the years. Um, which they, you still do, right? I mean, which that's if if anyone wants to contact you for yeah, uh, machining like, stuff yep, or whatever. Yep, pretty much um, that's all I do now. Like, so I have a I have a full custom build that I'm doing for a guy. Uh-huh. Um, but I basically told him that he's the last the last one. Okay. Like I I will still really? build. Really? So I, you're just gonna be a parts guy soon? Yeah. Like I, you know what? I, and personal builds, I'm assuming. That's what I was gonna say. I'll never right. stop building that. I got I got two builds that I'm doing for myself. Right. If somebody wants them, cool, by all means. But I'm just the industry has changed so much in the last five years. Right. You know, bolt on, bolt on things are you know bikes like that. Dude. Yeah. That's where the money is. Exactly. Because yeah. you know. Uh, Amazon fucked that up because you can order anything and it'll be here tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people don't like waiting six, eight, ten months for parts. Right. But they don't realize how intense, a, you know, a ground up build to handle correctly, to it's work correctly. Thousands of hours. Thank you. And, you know, nobody wants to pay crazy. for it. Yeah. And so it got to a point where every time I was done with one, there was always a month or so of like scrambling to make when's the next one going to come or what can I build for somebody, you know? So, you know, I've been doing a lot of shit for Justin, uh, dream rides, uh, John John. and dream rides. One of my best friends, dude, like in the industry, I've known him since we both started in 99 together, like working on and starting on bikes. He was at the Harley Davidson dealership. I was building my very first personal bike. And so we've been good, great friends ever since. Um, I mean, name fucking 20 of them, but I, I don't really care. You know, it's like, right. I don't, they're all great people and they all, but I'm not trying to get credit for anything. You right, know what I mean? Right. They're, they're parts. I'm just, somebody's going to make them. So right, like, why right. can't I, be, why can't I make the money to pay my bills? You 100% know? dude. Yeah. And, um, keeps it in America too. You that's, know, you're not going to some bullshit foreign manufacturer. 100%. Me and you know? Paul, that's one of our things. We, we argue with people all the time. You yeah. know, if you're. If you're willing to send all that shit out, you're willing to pay less, then you're obviously not willing, you don't love this industry as much as we do. Correct. You know, and I don't mean it that way in a dick way, but it's, we have put our heart and souls into this industry. Right. And we make everything, you know, both of us, both of us used to make everything by hand. Then we had to change a little bit for the times. Right. And, but now we both still work 15 hour days. Like it's not, you know. Yeah. And I don't think people realize like, yeah, that's great. You're getting your parts cheap, but it's coming at a cost. Mm. Oh, a huge cost. So it's yep. like you're not going to have your fucking cake and eat it too. Yep. It will eventually cut your feet off. Yep. Shitty metal, shitty fucking like uh, quality control. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I had, I got one, I was building a bike for a guy one time and he sent me an air filter that he had bought and it had a fucking curl that was probably the size of a fucking dime mm-hmm. at, and it had already been chromed and fucking uh, had some black uh, stuff on it too. So it had been through- All of its finished It process. had been through three processes and no one went. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yep. Yep. and that's what you're gonna get when you get that shit. And then things break. People are like, oh, why did this break? Well, the metal quality is totally different. Right. You know what I mean? We spend hours trying to decide what is gonna be the right strengths for things, you right, know? Right. And, uh, so, so no, yeah, I have, I, I 
it would have to be a crazy unique thing for me to do another bike for a customer. Right. Yeah, yeah. Even this one that I'm working on right now, it's coming up on like 10 months. I told the dude 12 to 14 months and he's already getting like antsy, calling all the time. But when I took it on, I was like, look, this is what it entails. Right. You, you know, <clears throat> it's a fucking great dude, great fucking build, but things take time. He brought me a picture and was like, I want this. So now it's not like I'm going in and making what I want. I have to fucking, he drew a fucking. Where did he see this picture? So he had, it's crazy. He had a digger frame that Arlen Ness built him in the 70s. Really? And how. 7 eighths tube? The seven eighths tube. Yeah. So I, I didn't. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't do it though. I did yeah. the one. I went. I did one inch on this new one. I oh, just, oh, I thought it was literally a frame that. Yeah, no, no, I'm, no, I'm, yeah, no. Sorry, I'm getting there. Yeah. So okay. He had a frame that was built by Arlen Ness, and then in his life, you know, whatever happened, it was at his dad's. His dad cleaned the garage out and sold everything. Oh. So he had wheels. He had a frame. I'd say he had a front end, you know, he had a Springer front end even sitting there. And so this dude knew what he wanted. He knows exactly, you know, this frame needs to be like this. This fucking fender needs to sit here. I want the bars just like this. And so when you're doing that, it's a lot tougher now, right. you know, because now I'm like, it's not like I'm making a frame the way I want it. Right. And if the trail and rake makes needs to be here to be performance wise, but he wants, you know what I mean? It's now I do. Dude, if you're building yeah. an Arlen Ness style old digger bike though, you're just building for cool. You're, 100%. You're not, you're not and he already told me he wants a fucking slick on the back. So he's not. Yeah. He wants to ride it to cool the coffee shop, bike. to the play, you know. Yeah. And so, but again, on that same note, everything that comes out of the shop needs to perform. Right. right. You know what I mean? And so, so I agree with you. Yeah. That's a little out of your style. Yeah. I mean. That, that whole the realm, dig, yeah, you know? the digger is definitely something I would have never done. You mm -hmm. know, rigids we've done, ten plus rigids. Right, love those, but they're always more of a. I would call your bikes performance rigids. Thank you. Yeah. You're one of the one of the. I remember so. Uh, I, a fun fact about that iron horse. <laughs> I I was in that iron horse also. Oh, nice. Uh, that's kind of how I I know like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you were in that. Uh, but I remember looking at that bike. And thinking like that's one of the first performance rigids that I saw. Like, you know, like yeah. once that was like just the beginning of when guys really started to crave performance out yeah. of these bikes. You know, yeah. Um, you were one of the early ones where I was like, God damn, dude, that bike fucking gets it. I like, appreciate like, that. Like yeah. I didn't know you at the time, yeah. but I remember thinking, I'm like, this fucking guy gets it. <laughs> you know, like. Well, my. I would love to say it was, you know, but Tom Foster, you know, great. Yeah, oh, dude. He, is, he has been my inspiration from the moment I'm, I, I saw anything about him. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. so Tom is a badass in every fucking way possible. Yeah. And so, I mean, he worked, he's a, he's a fucking rocket engineer. Mm -hmm. He sent billions of dollars of shit into space. He looks like he could fuck you up just by flicking you in the forehead. Yeah. And he's one of the fastest, best fucking riders I've ever seen. And so, it's, I mean, it was like when I got into the industry, there was a couple guys I fucking, I appreciated. Fucking Jesse being one of them, mm -hmm. uh, just because of what he was doing. And Tom was the lead. I mean, Tom was right up there. Yeah. And yeah. now to be, 20, you know, 18 years later and we talk like on a weekly basis, we fucking text bullshit it's is, is tom foster um he's a socal guy right yeah he used to be in la okay and then he moved up the coast to like fuck, i can like, never remember like, like mid, mid california somewhere not even mid so between like san francisco and la okay yeah yeah somewhere like that because he's you know he's older tired of all the bullshit tired yeah. of all the you know the city life isn't you know they enjoy their stuff he's been retired for few years now dude so and so long long story short that's that was always my inspiration okay i rode dirt bikes so i knew they had to perform but seeing this motherfucker riding harleys the way he did it mm -hmm. was like okay because i never i grew up i went to sturgis when i was 12 on a family trip through to chicago and i loved motorcycles and i loved it but i never was like i don't want to say it's a dick thing but i was never the harley lifestyle you okay. know i never wore the fucking I never wore what everyone wore. You were never wore. a leather daddy. Yeah, I always wore my, <laughs> this is what I always ride in. You know yeah. what I mean? And I've, so I, I don't change whatever I'm, 
and I don't mean that people that are riding change because they have their lifestyle. You know, right. I just I just love motorcycles. You know, I never ask you how old you are, but I think um, you've got to be similar in age to me. I'm 39. Um, I'm 46. Oh wow! <laughs> I, well, it started with like your generation then for sure, where. Uh, people really started to depart from, let's call it the old traditions. Exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? Yep. Uh, Jesse James is another one who was like yep. an early uh, early guy on like really departing from your traditional Yeah, he loved uh, motorcycles. He didn't stuff. give a fuck what right. was he, the norm. This right. is what I, I like these to look like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Um, I'm pretty excited about it, you know. I'm I'm not really a traditional guy myself. No, you know? exactly. You do your. Th um, that's what's cool about you, though, is you do your own thing too. Mm -hmm. And that's my, that's the way. I love. That's what I love about the motorcycle industry. There's so many dudes that just don't give a fuck, and right. they do it their own way. Right. Is it something that I would do? Absolutely not. Would right. I build a bike like that? No. Would I ride that bike? Absolutely not. But you know what? You love that thing as much as the one I love. Yeah how can you take that away from somebody you know yeah and and even if like whatever you know there's a lot of guys i don't really like their style but i'm friends with them yep uh they're fucking fun as shit to hang out with oh yeah you know like we're still good friends you do you know? know uh josh motorcycle dork uh no so i haven't met him we okay. talk a but lot you know on of him Instagram. though okay yeah, yeah yeah i definitely want to have him on one day so that but is we, we chat a lot that dude is the best dude in the industry okay like hands down he doesn't give a fuck what you think of his bike, he does, he lives his life yeah. the way he wants to, <laughs> yeah. and he will do whatever the fuck he wants on a motorcycle, and if you don't like it, cool, move on to the next one. Yeah. I mean, he is... He, he pissed so many people off with that Dyna. Uh, what, or the what FXR, it? no. What, he put a Han, uh, he put a Goldwing engine Oh, no, so we did, a, so, so, yeah, or? so I did the frame for that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> after I did the frame Dude, for... Dude, I thought it was cool as shit. It was... So when he came, so I did the, his FXR, the stretched FXR he did. That yep. was all the different colors. Oh, that, that's who, that's how I got turned on to him. And that's uh, what pissed everyone off first because of the that colors. That was another and bike shit. that was so rad, was though, so, man. Dude, if I you, it was awesome. If you didn't look at the colors, I mean, I don't care about the colors, but if you didn't right. look at them and you broke all the parts he did on it, right? The fucking bike was insane. Dude. Oh yeah. He's like, hey, do you want to stretch this frame? I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, no yep. problem. So we made, you know, new down tube, made all the two, everything came through, so it looked. As clean as it could be. Yeah. And then I gave it to him. I did the mids, I think, on it. Some bars. Maybe the pie. A couple little things, you know. Yeah. And then he fucking killed it. Yeah. And so when he was all done with that and he had gone on all the little shows and he came up one day. He's like, hey, can I come by for a while? Because he lives in Sac, so he's like two hours away. Okay. And uh, he came up. We were hanging out. And he's like, all right. Goldwing. I got this idea. <laughs> So I'm like, all right. And he goes, come to the van. I have the Goldwing in the van already, you know? And so we went out there and I'm kind of looking and looking. I was like, buddy, I just, I don't know. Like, I think it's going to just be too choppy. And the amount of money that you're going to have to spend to make it the way we want it, right. maybe more than what you're looking to, you know? He's like, hang on to it for a couple of weeks, stare at it, tell me what you think. So fuck it. Just, I kept walking by it, walking by it. And yeah, dude, that thing. He fucking killed it on that. I'm assuming though he has an absurd amount of money into that bike. Like he has a, a not worth yeah he has way money. oh no no that yeah. that bike went over the not worth it yeah halfway through and shit. <laughs> but on that same note, he he told like he said he goes if I have to keep this one yeah this wouldn't be the worst one to keep you yeah. know and so yeah and so I did I fucking ran it to the I mean I worked as hard as I could but it just everything took so much time you know you're making whole new mounts we basically took. I cut the... You're basically just keeping like where the rear shocks attach and that seat post tube. So the whole it, rest of the frame must have been custom, right? Yeah, so it was crazy. So we took the whole top of the fucking Dyna, the neck, the That's, fucking tube, the seat, and the struts, uh -huh. and cut that off. And then I cut everything off of the gold wing and set that in place because he wanted to use Harley uh, tree front end, Harley tank, Oh, Harley man. fairing, Harley seat, and Harley fender. Okay. And so then, you know, now you got to make everything. Now you're just connecting the dots. Yeah, and kinda. making new pieces and doing this and that. And and then the shock mounts were the only other thing because it has a, 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 a gear-driven swing arm or gear-driven rear end in the swing arm. You know, it's got the, oh, the uh, shaft. Oh, Sorry, shaft, shaft driven. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now all of a sudden everything's a little different so we had to make some new wow. shock mounts and things like that is the goldwing a monoshock bike no it was dual 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. It was dual. There were just some shitty little shocks out on the side. And then he took... That was, the, I mean, the funniest part. So then we took the, the headers, which are three on either side, brought them down, and he fucking put a thunder header uh, a tip on it. I think I remember that. So it that. looks... Yeah. I mean, it, it's fucking crazy. Like, when you look at it all done... And then, like I said, when I gave him the frame... It was a crapshoot on how it was going to finish. You know, I know he has great vision. Right. But still, like, that's a lot of shit to fucking put together, dude. And <laughs> yeah. He yeah. kept sending me pictures. I was like, just don't send me any for a little while. I said, I want to see it when it's done. And that fucking picture at the end just, I was like, dude, you killed it. Like, yeah. you, you did everything that made this look awesome, you know? And so, yeah. So, long story short, yeah. Do things like, I, I enjoy doing things like that. I probably won't do anything like that anymore unless it's for Josh. <laughs> you know, just because he's a okay. good, he's such a good dude. He understands what it takes. Yeah. And he's got crazy fucking ideas. And I like that. You okay. know what I mean? Like, like this, Does this he idea. have a real wild collection of personal bikes? Uh, he's got a gold wing. He's got that <laughs> chopper. He's got the, no, he's probably got, he always sells. So oh, like man. he's. That's kind of his business, right? He's exactly. A buyer and seller. So he's eBay, parts, whatever, parts eBay but, guy, but, yeah. but bikes, if you, you know, he has all sorts of bikes. He's had tons of FXRs. Okay. He's had really nice FXRs, you know, full bagger, full touring ones. Um, but they, you know, money, come and go, need to run your business. Mm -hmm. You know, he loves the lifestyle he lives. Yeah. So sometimes we have to sell things that we enjoy. Right. To continue the lifestyle, you know, yeah. not having your own, not having a boss for, I'm sh I think he's like 10, 12 years into it now. Okay. And I've, I'm 18 years now. So those things are more valuable sometimes, you know, not having times or not having a boss. Yeah. So if that has to go, then that has to go. Yeah. You know? so. Yeah. I'm constantly uh, buying and selling and uh, people that don't do it, uh, they get crazy about it sometimes. Yeah. They're like, how can you sell that bike? I'm like, no, fucking no. There'll be another. Yeah. Dude, I built like, that. They'll come yeah. and go. I you spent. Know? Like, two months whatever. of my life building that TV, uh, that Discovery bike. Yeah. I spent, it was the fucking chopper that I always wanted to build myself. Mm -hmm. The exact dimensions, the exact everything. Had it for fucking eight years and I just sold motor and tranny out of it and, or driveline to one dude in, in, uh, up in Washington. And I sold the chassis to my buddy that uh, helped, that was part of the help doing it, you know? Yeah. And everyone said the same thing. RKB Rick was like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, yeah. I can't have you do that. I'm like, dude. Yeah, well, I mean, a rich guy's not walking through the door and giving me 50 grand for it. Thank so you. what do you want me to exactly, do? Exactly, you know? like, exactly. And I wanted my fucking, and I wanted my, <laughs> new, my new ride that I spend way more time with my kids in. Right. You know, I've spent so many hours in the shop. I'm in the shop 15, 12, 15 hours a day. So when I can go take my kids places, yeah. you know, I... Are you a car guy also? No. I, I just made it a Porsche nope. joke, but like, no, I, are yeah. you, do you have like muscle cars Absolutely or Absolutely not. I fucking no. hate muscle cars. Really? I, Brian, we're going to fight soon. Dude. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I, I felt like that from the very beginning. So no. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know that. I mean, I just don't like, I think I'm a big dude. And if everyone likes something, yeah. I'm not into it. Okay. So when like muscle, when I, when I grew up, when I was in high school and after high school, Camaros, Muscle cars, that's what everybody fucking wanted. Yeah. So I had no interest. You okay. know, I, I wanted to do choppers because okay. nobody wanted choppers. And then whenever we wanted choppers, I was like, oh, well, I'll do adventure bikes, okay. you know, or, or this kind of bike or this, you know, I just, uh, I've never you, been the... Are you uh, like annoyed that Harley came out to Pan America now? So yes and no. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm annoyed <laughs> because it's never going to be what a KTM is right. or a BMW. Right. But I'm also so happy that they are... Dude, I think it's one of the coolest things they've ever done. You know what I mean? Yeah. I always thought the V-Rod was cool. I thought the V-Rod looked like shit, right. but I thought the concept was cool. Yeah. I love that they are changing. You know what I mean? And, I, and they don't have to go away from their original stuff. Right. But like... That's what I say to people. With this Pan America, it fucking pissed everyone off. First yep. off, I like it. Yeah. Um, I would have bought a Pan America if it was out when I bought that bike. I wouldn't have bought that. So that's a tough one because those two are my favorite. I think they're the best Harleys. I think they're the best that Harley has ever offered. Handle, handling I, I and performance tell people wise. when they ask how that is i said yep. it's the it's the best bike they've built since the fxr the, the, so I, I, that's what i think the fxr is badass the yeah. fxr will always be the traditional badass thing that it's ever yeah but just performance wise without spending any money these two motherfuckers can't be beat on no, the road 100%. you know what i mean yeah. i got a lot of fxrs yeah like I, i'm that's my favorite bike ever yep. but Dude, that's the best bike Harley's ever built right there. So sure. I, I agree well, like with that. Said, well, America, what you know? they're doing here with this bike, changing it from 
you know, a half and half bike to a strictly road bike. Right. And making it the, you know, making not look like a road glide, but have the same things that a road glide would have. Mm -hmm. So someone could jump on this and ride across the country. Right. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen done with one of the new Harleys. Right. Because, yeah, you'll be able to go down a dirt road if you want. But yep. you know what? You know how awesome it's going to be to get on this thing with that motor oh, God. and that suspension and ride fucking across country, dude. Like, yeah. Or even ride 100 miles. That motor is so fast. And so, and yeah, okay, it doesn't sound like a Harley. Okay, it's not the fucking traditional V-twin. Right. It's fucking cool. Yeah. My, v, my KTM isn't a traditional V-twin. It's one of the coolest fucking motors I've ever, dri- you know, ridden. Right, right. So, yeah, I think I, I'm not mad at them at all because I think Justin and Chris have nailed it on their vision. Right. And what this should be and what the future of it should be. Yeah. Great. You can take it on the dirt all you want. But it's going to be one of the baddest road bikes that I've, I, I think Harley has ever had. Yeah, for sure. I just Do rode. Do you think they're going to make like a street street version of the Pan America? I think after they see this, they are. Really? I mean, I when this goes to like the. Like an S model or whatever they're yeah. going to call it. No, I, 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 I fully believe they are. Okay. Because. Again, their their idea and their their vision on this bike is yep. exactly what Harley should have done. Right. They shouldn't. Cool. You, you I don't think they should have done the off road thing. Huh? I just don't think they should have focused on it being an off road bike. Okay. Okay. You know what I did here though this weekend? Um, supposedly but, it's yeah. the number one selling adventure bike in the world now. It outsold BMW in twenty three. Uh, I'm in twenty two. I mean, I wouldn't argue that. You know, I mean, I. That's, I I'm not saying it's a bad. I'm ba- yeah. surprised. And honestly. there's dudes like Danger Dan, and there's dudes that ride the fucking piss out of them. Right. That's right. not. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I just think it's. Well, I'm just saying from yeah. a sales standpoint. Sales they, standpoint. They fucking I think nailed it's, that. Yeah. Obviously, they did because and a lot of the dudes. I agree are gonna, with what you're saying yeah. from a function standpoint. Yeah, yeah. But and there's going to be guys like Dan that are going to ride them to there. But 90% right. of the dudes that buy those are going to go on a dirt road. They're going to be a, like the Jeep. A fire seat. road. But they'll, you know what? Lift the Jeeps around cities now. Exactly. That never see dirt. But know? at least it opens up the opportunity. Right. You know, because where I'm at, there's fucking dirt roads everywhere. Right. So if you can just take that to a fucking lake and go fishing, you know, if an yes. older dude is like, oh, I can ride down, ride down that fire road now. Right. Then it did its fucking job, you know. For sure. But I fully believe that when people see the street version of this like i think it's gonna uh, people are gonna want it and also harley is gonna be like oh okay because you know as well as i do they've seen builders over the years and changed their you know i mean there's certain bikes that oh, are, that's where they get it from is it, the aftermarket. Exactly, exactly you know they just got to figure out how to make it affordable and work with the epa and dot rules and that's where their hands know? are tied you know yes. what I mean? yeah yeah what well, that's like when people bash on harley like man they're so tied like their hands yep. are so tied in a lot of these situations yep. and it's a fucking business like i've put product on a shelf like it's not fucking easy to go from like you know like to go from concept to a product on the shelf to like make it affordable and practical dude, and like we, all that yeah. shit dude like we it's, got this bike at the end of thing. February, and we had another guy from Ramjet that let us borrow his for a couple of days to, mm-hmm. to measure some stuff so we could at least get a jump start. But dude, February. So we got it February 12th, 15th. I was here like on the end of February, beginning of March to start. No, I think we got Yeah, we got it at the beginning of March, and like three days later I was here. We were taking shit apart. And so now what is it? fucking may 8th or something so we've had from that time to you know their concept a lot of work to sense. design to fucking program to making parts you know did you guys start off with a brand new bike yeah brand new wow yeah, yeah, yeah. that's crazy yeah they asked them what they wanted and they were like we want the fucking that's crazy justin had, i mean i don't know if chris justin talked to me about the vision you know right. way before that so i'm sure him and chris had already had that concept going yeah. and so when they had the option to get it they were like fuck yeah we want the pan am cool i remember the first mock-up picture they posted i reposted it on my instagram i'm like this is going to be the build yeah I, however i worded it i was like keep your eyes on this thing it's going to be yeah the baddest build ever There's... i never thought i'd be sitting in front of the fucking <laughs> thing i didn't even know i'd be here until a week ago you know like nice i didn't even know i was coming to phoenix or well, whatever I, but yeah last night i pulled up I like, and you oh, were sitting on great. the other side of the uh, van working on your bike you yeah know? yeah just popped in man yeah you know so. it's crazy you're even here yeah. i didn't think you'd be here yeah you know? no I, that's I'm, I'm in and out of here all the time though that's what and it's always yeah. quick tr- sometimes it's a week sometimes it's a couple days like this one yeah so this one i have to give 
back quickly because again we need mid controls a couple other things to button up okay and now they can send justin's finishing up the tank right now so they can get everything off to the painter and saddleman who's and, their paint guy on this one fuck dude i'm sorry i know his you name know. and i know oh. no i know who i know his name and i know i'm going brain dead right now though okay yeah, 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 yeah. all right i would have i mean it's somebody they used on the last the 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 two baggers they just did. Okay. It's it's one of their guys they use multiple times. Okay. His name's Andy, I believe. Okay. Sorry, dude. That's Sorry, such, Andy. Yeah. yeah, it's shitty. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a dick. I'll throw him in the show notes. How's that? Perfect. We'll give him a little redemption. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure he's awesome. That's Have you like, seen the new Hot Bike magazine? No. Nah. Okay. Whatever the bike is on the cover. Okay. He painted that one, and his name is on the cover. Okay. So that, was it one of their bikes, or he just happened to paint the bike that's on the cover this no, month? Or sorry, no, not on the cover. It's just uh, Danny G's ad or whatever. There's an ad with Danny G in there, and fuck, whatever. Okay. And he's in there. I'll I'll find it for you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, you got me in there early in the morning. <laughs> um. Cool, man. Um, just trying to think. Um, what do you got like uh, coming up on the personal side? You said you got two builds. So yeah, um, FXR tour. Let me get that in real quick. Yeah. Right. So Jace Fast Life Garage. Right. Uh, oh, that's that's what I wanted to ask yep. you actually. Back to that shovelhead FXR. Yep. Is yours going to be chopped? No. So I'm I made mine. Uh, dude, grew up in the '80s. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Black Rain. You know what I mean? Back that movie with Michael Douglas and uh -huh. everything. Like, dude, that bike was fucking iconic to me growing up. Um, it was a Sportster. Yeah. I was but it was say. just all blacked out, and it's just the way it looked. You okay. know. And so when I got mine, I wanted, I want to do something that is 80s, you know, reminiscent. Okay. And so I had, um, uh, I did a lot of things that no one will notice, you know, narrowed the Dude, tank. Dude, that's every good custom build. Yeah, though. like the tank is narrow, yeah. the, you know, the 35 millimeter uh, made trees for it, but uh, did uh, dual front radials. Oh, really? FXR Bazaar is like, oh, no one's ever done that. You can't really? do that. And so with the with the smaller disc, no, with fucking, the, no, twelve inch fucking disc. Too. Oh, really? And that's where he was like, there's no way you can do that, you know. And not being a dick, he was right. just like, that, no one's done it. No and one's so ever done it. Yeah. I was like, well, yeah, okay, I'm gonna do that then. You know, right. yeah, 35 millimeter is the worst front end to have on there. Right. But you know what? It's and so it's all black. John Lefevre, Lefevre from Lefevre. I can never say this, but he's he did he painted the whole thing. Okay. Uh, Leaf Leaf Fever, but he's a badass dude. He's in uh, over on the East Coast. Okay. One of the I mean one of the nicest dudes. I talking about John the painter? Yeah. No, not John the painter. Not oh. not that works with oh. Bobby. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, okay. no. 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 Uh, uh, I'll show you his name afterwards. I just can't okay. pronounce it the way all the Man, fucking F's and E's painters are. Painters are getting no love today. Yeah, no, no. No, John, no, dude. He is one of the best. But his last name has too many E's and F's all in a fucking row. So I don't okay. know how to say it right. Okay. But uh, he does a lot of big John uh, Dream Rides paint jobs too. Okay. Um, so he painted it uh, black and gold like the original 82. Okay. But then uh, John from Dream Rides gave me an, uh, a Liberty decal. So from the 87 version, right? right? The Liberty, fucking Statue of Liberty decal. Yeah. So it's kind of a stock paint job, but not, okay. you know, and then, um, uh, so it's, no, not chopped, but I, you know, it's got a two inch belt drive. Cool. It's got custom mids. It's, you know, everything is, I'm going to do a swing arm, uh, bolt together oil tank. Oh yeah, you were talking yeah. about that. Yesterday. And then the, the triple trees. And so it'll look like it was supposed to have been in the eighties, but obviously when we start nitpicking things, you know, yeah. um, put a new, uh, I left the tapered five speed, but then uh, machined down a hydraulic baker. Uh, so it would fit and- So it doesn't have the arm on it anymore? So no arm and everything. Yeah, ditched wow. all that shit. So now it's a hydraulic with the Behringer, you know, hydraulics. Is that gonna be a product you're offering? No, probably not. Yeah, okay. because it's a baker cover, you know okay. what I mean? Like. I don't want to, so I'm a shitty dude. I don't want to offer any of my own products anymore. I've okay. offered products over myself for years. You spent all this time and energy and then they just never sell. You right. know what I mean? But everybody else, like, you know, just everybody else has ideas and fucking make you 50 of them and then they sell it, you know, and they make more. So right. it, it takes a, you know, when you're buying a motorcycle, here's the pool, here's the custom pool. And then I'm fucking even, you know, if you want something that I've made, it's even smaller. So. Yeah. No, I, you know, there's things that I build that I will make more of if somebody wants them. Right. But no, I have that. It's just a cool piece that I wanted to do to change that whole side of that thing, but still use the tapered, you know, and then made a little uh, adapter for the new starter. So it has a new type starter. 
Like a 90 and up starter? Exactly. Yep. Really? Yep. Wow. So now it'll have, you know, belt drive, new starter, all the good shit, but it'll still be the shitty five-speed tapered. Right. So still got the taper shaft. Yeah, exactly. So which really isn't as bad as people think. Like and not with the for shovel nothing head. with the shovel. Thank like you. you'll like Thank the you. taper half. The taper shaft will handle a shovel. It'll have it'll Fine. handle whatever I'm trying to do on that. Right. It's when you start throwing the horsepower, you're fucked. You right. Know, so right, because I mean that's it. That's what taper shafts were designed for, man. Like they were designed back in fucking knucklehead days. Yeah, exactly. You know? Like yep. Once Evos came around, is when you needed this flying shaft. Yep. No, oh, for sure. Because um, I mean it's. You just start fucking you know, pumping horsepower. Some guys things. argue that, but I don't know. I don't Everybody care, I don't care how good you set up a taper shaft, dude. I'll break it in a day with enough horsepower. Yeah. You know. I agree. Like I said, I'm not... I wanted to keep it reminiscent to the 80s, but also, you know, something different. So that's we're doing that in going to Born Free, Texas. Okay. We're all meeting in Durango and then riding from Durango to wherever the Born Free deal is. You guys are starting at the Four Corners Rally, right? So. No, I don't know about a rally. Just, I think it, we're starting to just at the Harley shop there. Okay. Yeah, Durango Harley is like sponsoring it. Okay. And they're a big sponsor. They're going to have a big party there the night we get we get there and stuff. Cool. So, no, and everybody, you know, I think it's going to be awesome because there's such a mix of FXRs. Mm-hmm. You know, Paul's chopping theirs. So much big horsepower Chase is popping there. And then fucking Paul's putting a fucking blower and shit yeah. in there. I mean, it's... <laughs> And then, and a lot of the other, a couple of the other dudes are huge horsepower dudes. You I know? heard um, Clem's is bringing a fuck ton of horsepower. Clem don't fuck around. Yeah. First off, yeah. he is bringing some <laughs> nasty fucking horsepower. Yeah. Um, Easy Riders cycles, he's doing more of a, an Indian Larry tribute. Mm-hmm. So his will probably be a little bit less rowdy than everybody else's. Right. Same um, with Nick. Yeah, yeah, same with Nick. My machinist, though, is putting a big motor in his. Yep. Well, these guys bringing an M8. With these like dudes are putting an M8. Crazy horsepower. Some crazy shit. And then the Sick. frame, the frame modifications that they've done, and some shit we're making for that dude is insane too. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see that bike too. I, that that one's gonna be bad. Well, yeah. like you said, when you walked in, dude, it it just draws your attention. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. And then Danny's fucking cylinder, like just everything about it is top yeah. quality. Yeah, those are the coolest fucking cylinders in the world, dude. Like. Um, when I do an M8 FXR, I think it's just required to have those cylinders on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, See, and the M8 would have been a good thing to do a year or so ago. Right. Well, that's when I, I but, bought it like two years ago. Well, but I'm saying... I just haven't started it yet. When they were the only ones that had the M8? Yeah, yeah. Cool. I was down to do an M8. Yeah. But Twin Cam, I couldn't do it. There's fucking 8,000 of them. Yeah. And Evo, I love Evos. That's my favorite motor. Okay. But just to put an Evo in the 82, I felt like... This was a match. You know, this thing's been together its whole life. Right. Let's keep these fucking, these couple things together. And that's totally against what I do. Well, so, you know. if you're going for, like, cool guy points, the shovel head is pretty cool. That's what everyone says. You know? We'll see if it makes it's it to fucking not Texas. An, it's <laughs> not an FXR. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. We'll see if it makes it to Texas. I know it will. I'm sure you'll set it up properly. <laughs> Worst case, dude, I'm there for fun. I, I'm not doing this build for any, any fucking notoriety any marketing any i don't give a fuck right. i am doing this build because the group of dudes are fucking awesome right the group chat is fucking awesome <laughs> and just being on the road with your friends like i'm really good friends with a few of the dudes mm-hmm. and then i've become friends on instagram with the other guys right. you know before this even happened and i knew fuck clam you know i mean i knew all these dudes before this i was a fan of all of their work before this right you know um are you going to keep this bike? So this one, it, this is one that I will keep okay. until someone offers me a, the correct amount of money. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So getting rid of the blue one, that was my like personal bike for the last eight years. Uh, I have mul- a couple show bikes in the house mm-hmm. that haven't run in fucking years okay. that, that are my Harleys, you know, but they're not the ones I ride. Okay. So this, this FXR, I plan on riding it, you know, all over the place. What does the house it. bike for Brian look like? Uh, did you see the one we did in 08 for the World Championships? The little orange one? Probably if I saw pictures. Yeah, yeah I'll um, show you. That, that one's I'd probably in there. go, oh yeah, I remember this bike. Yeah, so not we did off the top of my head. World Championships in uh, 08 and came in 10th, top 10. Okay. Um, Goldhammer was there. Fucking shit. I remember you, like, Roger Goldhammer was. Um, he did the yellow land. Wasn't speed. he like the first American to to win? To win, dude. right? He's the baddest motherfucker. Yeah, he is. built yeah. a bad motherfucker. Dude, Roger is. I remember that bike. Uh, 
uh, Tom is my fucking idol in life yep. and everything. I could never be Roger. Roger talks to me and I fucking feel like an idiot. <laughs> He is so intelligent. <laughs> he is so awesome. He is the nicest motherfucking guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so sad that he is not in the industry anymore because of all the bullshit that this industry... He's one of the dudes that just was like, I don't want to be part of this anymore. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and, and I don't he know. Does he build his own bikes? He builds his own shit. Dude, uh -huh. he is fucking... His, he is the greatest craftsman of all, of all time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if anybody wants to argue with that, fuck off. <laughs> so... He, yeah, that dude, he won first time, first American, mm -hmm. best fucking bike. You know, I mean, he had a single, his when he had the single cylinder that produced 162 horsepower. Yeah. Went out and set a world record at fucking Bonneville with it. Yeah. Then took it apart, painted it, and brought it to the world championships. So, long story short, that was one of my, like, I spent a whole year and a half building that bike, or, you know, a whole year designing and building that bike by hand, every little piece. And to take it there and get his vote and come in 10th. And then the next year we went again and that bike, I built both of those bikes for my kid, one, one for each of my kids. Okay. So they sit in the living room. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would assume those are the only two that are just never for sale. The kids will do what they want with them, but. Exactly. I, but, I mean, realistically, no, they're not for sale. Right. I sold, shitty dad, I sold the <laughs> engine out of one of them to uh, add some money for the new machine. Were they Evos? It was just an Evo. It was okay. an 80 inch Evo. Like oh, okay. it, I can fucking replace it with an, a million different motors. Mm -hmm. But to, to again, selling things that just gets back to what we we're talking about. <laughs> right. To sell that motor put me in a position to do what we're doing now. Right. And that's only a benefit for my family, a benefit for my future. Right. You know. And so to me, it, it made it made no sense at all. The motor sitting in there doing nothing right when you could have exactly. taken a step forward exactly which we did and now I'm, ha I'm happy i made that decision so right right yep that's cool man i always love uh like living room bikes and engines and stuff yeah like good ones on display yeah no no, not we... just some greasy piece of shit leaking oil on your floor no, 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 you know no. yeah my wife won't but... let my uh <laughs> i got a 1911 pope that i fucking really have and she won't let that in the house yet because it's uh, one of the other ones has to go and I'm like nah it can stay in the shop right, right. <laughs> it's up on display in the shop and shit so. cool yeah yeah cool um does your art look I mean does your art does your house look very like metal arty like no. did you get crazy like nope. we were so that. the shop and everything is yeah. shop I have like a little grinding room it's got the cool fucking metal on the outside you know like a nice little roof that looks like a little house inside the sh you know do whatever I want in there my wife does whatever she wants inside the house. Gotcha. You know what I mean? She is, I mean, I wouldn't be here without her after right. 20 something years. Uh, and so there's, I don't give a fuck. Like as long as, as, if I can do what I want with my bikes. Right. And I think that's why I don't care in the house. You know what I mean? Right. As long as I have a chair to sit in that's comfortable in the house, we have a nice couch, TV. I don't give a fuck what you do. You yeah. know what I mean? You, whatever I've you, always yeah. told people that, like guys will get very like, uh, crazy about like girls wanting to design houses and shit. I'm like, I wouldn't even care about that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, not that I'm the one you should be taking relationship no, no, advice I know, but, from. But I agree but with you. But like, who? You know, like, let that one go, man. Who cares? So, you know? if you'd like to run through a bunch of girls and you'd like to be with multiple people, that may work. Right. But after, like I said, I've known her. We've been together since I was 18. Uh huh. We've been through everything Damn. together. We've been through the lowest. You know. There's many, many years where the shop didn't make a fucking dime. It right. made what it barely made to pay the bills. And so she's, you know, we've stuck by each other through all that. So to fight over fucking what she wants to do in the kitchen. Right. Why okay. she wants to put a fucking thing that, how do you want me to do it? Right. Do you know what I mean? Can I help you do it? Do you want, you know, like, I don't care, yeah. you know? And so, but my shop, that's another thing. Yeah. It has like, it has a lot of the little things that meant a lot to me coming mm -hmm. through the, sh you know, I only have two trophies in there. It's the World Championship trophy, and then it's the, uh, uh, the Arlen Ness Best of Show at the Arlen Ness Show. Was this while he was still alive? It was when he, oh, it was uh, 2008. Cool, so he, man. Picked, so he, he, he picked the fucking, yeah, I've, I've met Arlen a couple times. Cool. Um, I've known Zach for a lot of years. I've known Zach since he was like 15 years old. Wow. Um, he's been, we've, he's been, I don't want to say a fan, but he's, he came up to my stuff in the very beginning too when he was young. It was like, this yeah. is different and cool, you know, because he's lived in this whole other life, you know, right. where this is all he saw. And so uh, it was neat to be able to be friends with him, you know, and uh, Corey's the only one I don't I don't know very well, okay. you know, but 
those two things were the only things that meant anything to me. You know, and then I got a couple of the bikes that were in magazines that were the first ones, you know, that meant a lot. And other than that, fucking TV, fucking shit like that. <laughs> you got to have that in there, you know. Yeah. So. Um, cool, man. Let's, uh, we'll wrap it up in a second. I just want to ask one other question. Um, would you ever do any TV shows again? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I had a fucking blast. Okay. Like a, a lot of people had a real problem with that show, mm-hmm. the way that everybody, the way that the producers tried to get you to do things, the way that. Did the, you basically the tell them to fuck off yeah. and you just did what you were doing anyway? Yeah. 100%. Like, dude, I, I don't mean that to be a dick. No, because yeah. you never had any like crazy drama or nothing. Yeah, no, no. And You're so, a pretty level-headed guy. Like, so that was the first day, dude. The producer came in. He's like, all right, this is what we're doing. This was this. And I was like, look, man, I appreciate you coming in. Like, I, I love that you're here. There's no question. But I've spent 15 years, you know, at that time, 13, 14 years yeah. building my shop. I'm not going to do something that makes me look stupid. I'm not going to pretend I messed up. I'm not going to pretend right. this. I'm not, not going to pretend that. a gas tank across yeah. the room. Exactly. You know? Yeah, like, or an exhaust pipe like Rick did. Right, right. Which was the day before that he actually threw that temper tantrum. Oh, uh, okay. He threw a fucking exhaust pipe at his brother. And then when they showed up, the fucking story got out and they were like, wait, can we reenact that? You oh know? my God. Dude. So they gave us 30 days, right? Everybody else besides Justin and a couple dudes bought frames. Mm-hmm. So the week prior to the fucking uh, them showing up, I got the frame situated. They, that is one thing they always did let you guys do. Well, on, they, on if they were letting was... dudes buy frames, that why the fuck couldn't I have my frame ready right. to go on Built that day one, right? right? You right. know what I mean? Because I could spend three weeks on a fucking frame. Right. Realistically, to do it right, right. you know? So that was, they said no problem with that. So. Like two weeks prior to that, we, uh, two weeks prior to that, we fucking, uh, I don't know who that was. I think it was Joe. I stole his chair or you stole his chair. Uh, he looked like Justin's brother or something. That's Justin's brother. Is it really? Yeah. He's awesome. He's the dude that welded up all the slide and shit. Oh, really? Fucking. Okay. Don't tell him I said he's fucking awesome. (laughs) But that's his chair. That's what he's looking for. Oh, okay. Uh, so no, he's, he's, he's one of the best dudes. Um, so yeah, we had the frame ready to go. Right. And, but everything else, dude, that 30 days, I worked 18 hour days for 27, 29 days, you know, yeah. because the three days they were there filming, we weren't allowed to work. Like, let me rephrase that. They it's distracted not that we were, you. No, they so much. had to set up a scene. Dude, they spent fucking two and a half hours setting up a scene in the shop. And then they'd come in and be like, okay, you're grinding. You're walking by with the transmission in your hand. You're fucking doing this. And we'd be like, okay, cool. And like those things were fine. I don't mind any of that. You know, I know they need their stuff, but like the first day. So I need you to argue with Keith. And I'm like, I'm not arguing with Keith. Keith and I don't argue. Right. Like this is my fucking buddy that helps me do everything. Like we're not going to make some shit up, you know? Right, right. Okay, we need you to make, uh, this didn't fit. No. Like I gave him one thing. Uh, we made up a story that we bought a set of legs from a dude in the alley off of Craigslist okay and it was dark and Keith didn't measure them you know like we got them there and we're like oh shit we're an inch too short oh this motherfucker fucked us on Craigslist so we cut him and fucking you know gotcha. but it was like that was fake as shit and then at the end so we show he shows up we rode the bike two days before they showed up to do the final assembly because again I'm not fucking doing this shit in the last minute oh I oh my god it's not starting oh my god where are we at like right, fuck right. all that that's not what we're here for you know you gave me 30 days I got it done in 28 and we rode the fucker you know so he shows up he's like what are we gonna do fucking hey Jesus Christ I'm like we'll take the seat off my buddy used a way too big a wrench pretended to bleed the brakes you know put it over the bleeder screw and just <laughs> pretend to move it a uh, couple other little things and so if you ever get to see it, the first time we try and start the bike, the light's off. Okay. Fucking turn it over. Rawr, 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 rawr. Fuck, it won't start, dude. Huge fan of uh, Chica, right? Yep. Back in the olden days. Mm-hmm. And he pulled that no gas thing, right? Fucking at the end of the biker build off, he couldn't get his shit to start. And he's like, oh, fuck, no gas. Fill it with gas, the thing fires up. So I'm like, fuck, dude, what's wrong? My buddy goes, I don't smell any gas. And I was like, fuck, we forgot to fill gas. And so I yell at my buddy and he goes and gets gas. We fucking fill some gas. I flip the little fucking switch. The light turns on, fires right up. (laughs) That's all they fucking got. And the dude was pissed. But 
he understood right. after talking to him. You know, it's like, look, dude, you may have talked to all these other dudes. I mean, Matt Harris, my great dude, 40 Cal, yeah, talked yeah. him into throwing his fucking toolbox drawer on the ground and walking out into the street, you know? <laughs> and again, cool. Like, I, I don't, there's nothing against Matt for doing that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they want. They want the TV shit. And that's probably why we won't get another TV show. Exactly. Because we won't do anything like that. I mean, and I'm ugly as fuck, too. That doesn't help either, so. <laughs> but no, I, I enjoyed every minute of it. I told my buddies in the very beginning, like, I want you to be part of this, but don't plan on anything. Right. Like, don't plan on selling a t-shirt. We're not going to be, you know, we're not going to shows and signing autographs after this. Right. We're going to spend 30 days together having a fucking ball, dude. We sat in the motorhome. We had a, my, my buddy was living in the motorhome that was on our property. We would sit in there for the fucking hour or so while they were getting shit ready. Fucking hanging out, drinking, smoking, talking shit, dude. And then they'd be like, okay, ready. And we'd be like, all right, <laughs> let's go, you know. It was the most fun time, you know. Cool, man. When, my, when they weren't filming, my friends were there probably, probably eight of the days, you know, total. But it was, I was there till fucking five in the morning sleeping for three, four hours upstairs in the shop and, or, you know, on the, on the couch and then back down to work. But it was a, you know, it was a thing of a lifetime, dude. Like I would have never turned it down, you know, right, and right. going against Rick. Rick's one of my best friends in the industry also. And it, that was so much fun talking shit two in the morning, like, fuck you, you suck. You're not going to get done. You know, my <laughs> bike's way better than yours, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then through the TV show is how I met Justin. So, oh, okay. uh, Scott Lurg from Baker transmissions. Okay. I'm sure you've seen him around. Yeah. So Scott's been with them for 18 years and he's only fucking 34. Oh, wow. And so he basically, he's, he, you know, he's been with them forever. He was living out at our place at the time uh, doing sales over the phone. Okay. And so he was, then he moved to Arizona. And so he's like, I know this dude, Justin, he's on the TV show too. And so Justin and I started talking and then met at Born Free and fucking... If you, we didn't look, di you know, we were two different people, but you wouldn't, we're like the same, you know, the way we act and the way we hand, handle things and do right. things, it's just, and the, and the, the interest in building things, you know, is so, is so clear, so. Dude, it makes you think how fucking, like, OCC is the pinnacle of these TV shows. Yep. It just makes you think how much shit they just must make them act all it was day. All, I mean, dude, I'm telling you, it, it was all fake. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that we did was fake. So you know, crazy. we set up the fucking, the bike on the fucking tank. He's like, oh, now I'm talking to them. Oh, this is what we did with the tank last night. And we right. still got to do the tunnel under here. They know that. Like, they're fucking standing there while we were doing it. You <laughs> right, know, and yeah. so the one thing was the funniest, though, is like they had me grind. Like I told you, my buddy had to walk with the transmission. And then my other buddy was like, putting the gas tank on or something we did fucking like 10 takes and then he was like shoot the sparks this way like what am i grinding he's like i don't know just fucking shoot sparks at me i'm like then can we move your fucking build table over two inches no motherfucker it's perfectly level right it's leveled in every fucking direction you're not moving shit all right all right you know but then we were the very last show of the whole season uh-huh the very, and the very last film. So when they fucking cut on us, that was a wrap for the whole thing. Wow, that's got to be a crazy feeling. It huh? was it was kind of weird with that. And then they stayed, the fucking dudes, the, the like filmer the dudes, stayed for the next like three, four hours and hung out. Because I had like 10 acres. Fucking they played wiffle ball. We were like, the fucking, the sound girl, that was the best part. She, we were always mic'd up. And she'd be like, 80 yards away from us, dude. Not even in the motor. And we'd be talking shit. And she'd come and knock on the door. She's like, hey, you guys are still mic'd up. We're like, yeah, oh, we know. <laughs> and then, like, after a while, we'd be like, I don't remember what her name was, but we'd be like, hey, fucking Melissa. That Melissa girl, Scott would start talking. You know, dude, she's so hot. She was looking at me earlier. And she'd look up from her thing, and she'd be like, no, I wasn't. You know, like, <laughs> so it was, that, it was a great time for us. I know a lot of guys didn't have fun. Right. And I know a lot of it was fake, but it was, it was a blast. So if they wanted to do something equivalent to that again, all, all day. Okay. Yeah. Cool, man. Get at him. Yep. This guy's going to be a big TV star again. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. That's cool, man. You want to tell people where to reach you or we'll wrap this thing up? Yeah. Uh, TPJconcepts.com and on Instagram, TPJconcepts. Uh, we used to have TPJ Customs, but got hacked. So, with our new uh, 
our new The good news is yeah. he's got a Tesla now, though. Yeah, and a so, new house. And a new I, house. I parked That's my right. Tesla in. And get, cool. it, get it, Alex. Bitcoin is fucking life. <laughs> she will get you all set up. Alex, whatever, whoever the bitch that hacked me. <laughs> so, no, and then, yeah, like I said, this 120th, uh, check that out at Born Free. Born Free Texas. We'll have the uh, FXR fucking tour. Yeah. Which I'm super happy to be a part of. Uh, Can't wait, man. Jason, I appreciate Jason, Justin from My Machinist yep. for including me. Um, and yeah, I mean, dude, I just appreciate you wanting to speak to somebody as irrelevant as I am. So. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> dude, speaking of Jace, now that I'm thinking about it, I should go, I'm going to go look at guy. my pictures, dude. Yeah, fuck Fucking, yeah. <laughs> this is probably an anniversary date from the first time I was on his show. On his? Okay. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was after EDR. Oh, yeah. And no, right he never... now, it's like the same date. I'm just coming from EDR. Yeah, he only has me on like when he's my neighborhood. He never flies me out to have me in the studio. He had me out with Justin and Chris, but then I felt like a little kid. He's like in a businessman's meeting. I was like in the corner trying to say like fucked up shit. <laughs> like, Damn, these guys are like all serious. Fuck this. No. <laughs> yeah, Jay's a good dude. I, I like him. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll be in Durango when you guys start or something. I don't know. Uh, dude, it'd be, I don't even know yeah. what the, what the date is, but I'm always in and out of Durango. I have so. no clue what the date is, but yeah. hit me. Dude, I'll, I'll get you all the info. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of people that are going to come along with us. Uh-huh. I know that. Okay. Like they're trying to push that pretty hard. Like, let's make this a ride. Like even guys that aren't doing oh, guys, builds? Guys get, yeah, no, they don't give a fuck. Okay. Like, it's basically, if you want to come ride, come ride. Cool. You know. Cool. So. Yeah, man, that sounds good. Um, I don't know. I'll see you guys next week. Enjoy. Thanks so much, Brian. No worries. Thank you.